Hey everyone, today we are going to be doing holiday season sales and marketing and how can you not only capitalize on it, but how can you manage it all? Um, I know I spoke to someone the other day, it was a big association actually, and they said to me, oh, we're winding down our marketing, you know, for the next two months, we're winding it down because, you know, we're going on holiday and it gets really quiet. And I'm like, you never ever wind down marketing. <laughs> you make sure that you schedule in your, you, you know, you schedule in your staff, that you organize, that you've notified your customers on when you're going to be around, that you've got, you know, your next step in mind. Because when you wind something down, it means you've got to wind it back up again. Like, <laughs> and um, and that's hard to do. So you want to make sure that you are keeping things steady and flowing, um, but still obviously able to capitalize um, and have those holidays and be able to manage it all. So let's just go into here. So end of year holiday campaign. So this is a this was a big stat. Retail sales are expected to reach one trillion this year over Christmas, one trillion. So how will you not only capitalize on that spending, but also manage it so that you do get to have a break if you choose to have a break over that time? The holiday is a great time to attract new customers, but it is also a good time for you to re-engage past customers. And we were talking about that earlier, just before the recording with Tara about um, having to always, you know, look, look, look for the new lot of customers to, to market to. We have to always consider who your customers are and how you can tailor your offer and content to meet their end of their year shopping needs. So I don't think I can say that enough. What is your customer's end of the year shopping needs and wants right now? Because you've got to tailor your offer, your content, your key messaging, uh, and your promotions, campaigns, all towards that right now okay especially because they are very stressed and overwhelmed at this time of the year so here's some of the things that you can do I called it everyone gifts gifts because we call it teacher gifts right but now people give to their beauty therapist they give to their best friend you know they give to their neighbor you give to the garbage man like you know your postal your posty dude so I just call them everyone gifts and you've got to think about what's relevant for you, for you, what you offer and, um, and what people are wanting right now. Obviously Christmas gifts, so Christmas presents, um, holiday, holidayers. So for example, like Tara was talking about, it, you know, people use their caravans over the Christmas and January season. So getting in beforehand and reminding them that they're going to want to have a comfortable sleep over that period when she's providing them with a, um, a comfortable mattress protector and topper. Um, you are paying attention to your ideal customer going, well, they holiday over December. So this is the content I need to create to remind them that they need this. Super Saturday. I don't know if you know what Super Saturday is. I had to actually remind myself. Super Saturday is the Saturday that falls before Christmas. It is also called Panic Saturday because everybody panics and gets those last Christmas presents. I can say that we are on the 21st of November today when I'm doing this recording in 2022. And I am almost, I would say 90% done with all my Christmas shopping. Um, because I do not like to go to the shops over the Christmas season. I would rather buy online. And of course, we have to also consider postage, the, re the restrictions on um, postage over the Christmas period as well. Things may take a lot longer to get here. I'll give you an example of that. My daughter's asked me for a first aid kit because they're going to schoolies today. They left this morning. Yesterday, my daughter came to pick it up and guess what had not arrived was the first aid kit that I'd bought on Amazon and they said it was going to be 48 hours and it took three days instead of two days. So there's just an indication of how that can happen. So I had to quickly go and buy another one um, and uh, make that up and give it to her. It just means I've got an ask new one now. So <laughs> um, Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve, some people do Christmas Eve presents. Some people do bo Boxing Day sales. So Boxing Day sales, New Year's sales, Australia Day sales, back to school sales and Valentine's Day. So I'll take you to this because we are at the end of the year. So you may have not seen this, but at the beginning of each year, I actually make the content plan for the year. So we're in the process of making up the 2023 one. This is the 2022 one. Um, so I will put it in our VIP group for the live audience. But these are just some other 
days that are available, okay? Obviously, you're only going to do ones that are relevant to you. So on Saturday, we went up to look at a new Land Cruiser for the caravan. And on the way back, we stopped off at Surame Wines. And uh, and we were so busy. And we were like, what's going on here? It was International Men's Day, okay? So (laughs) there are the days that you can also feature into your social media, but also into your marketing campaigns and sales. So here's just some of the, you know, other ones that may or may not be relevant to you. Uh, Tara, you might go on World Soil Day and talk about that (laughs) because you don't want to soil your sheets. Um, Ugly Christmas Sweater Day, if you're looking for some engagement posts. Thank you note day. Um, Card playing day. Again, that would be a nice caravanning one day. Um, Regifting day. Yeah, just a few in there uh, that you can go in and have a look at. Obviously, there are different. This one is Australian based, um, but I will put it up in there so you can have a look at it as well. If you're just looking for those fillers as well um, for what you're selling. Um, Stop sharing that. So I will also give you the 2023 one as soon as we are finished making it. So I suppose the trick is to make it seasonal. You can also consider the weather, uh, anything that may be topical right now, including Christmas themes in your branding and updating your headings and key messages so that it's relevant to your audience right now, but relevant to the silly season as well. At this busy time, your customers are overwhelmed uh, with what they're going to spend their money on. Okay, they're overwhelmed with spending. And then they're overwhelmed with what they're going to spend it on. And they just want to, they want it super easy um, for you to do. So here are my three main things for you to think about. Keep it super easy for them to buy. Okay. Do not overcomplicate it. Make it literally one click, super easy for them. And tell them, I've made it super easy for you to purchase this and have it delivered by Christmas. Because right now they are so scatterbrained that they may not be thinking straight. So when you tell them that that's what you've thought of, they go, thank you so much. And they will purchase from you just based on the fact that you've told them. Number two is it needs to make sense. Okay. It has to be relevant to what they're going through right now. If it's not relevant for what they're going through right now, it's just not going to make sense. And the third one, it has to solve their problem and their aspirations of what they're going through right now. And what they're going through right now changes. I mean, over this time of year, we have, you know, some of the biggest sort of suicide rates. Um, We also found that uh, nurses and teachers, Uh, in the fitness industry, they love training over Christmas, over December and January, because during the year, they don't get a chance to do it. So they absolutely love it when they get December and Jan, and they're not working as much, or they've got holidays, and they can actually train. So running a promotion for teachers worked exceptionally well. Running a challenge for teachers and nurses over that time worked really well. So how to make seasonal marketing decisions? Well, firstly, you could look at your past campaigns. So go back to last year and have a look at what you um, previously did and what worked or didn't work, remembering it may not work this year. Um, You could also do the 12 days of Christmas. Um, I did that one year, which is every day over 12 days, I did a special offer. Um, A bit hard to manage because an email had to go out and the social medias had to go out as well. Took a bit of planning. Um, but if it's something as simple as, say, for example, what with what um, Leah or Alison do, do, do with their, um, you know, Alison could do an, an essential oil every day with a feature and a coupon code for that day. And Leah could do a scent, for example, every single day. And it could be the 12 days of Christmas. But then it's got to go out on socials, got to go out on um, emails as well. You've got to make sure you're available to do it. And number two, when you're making those seasonal marketing decisions, do not funnel lump. So do not treat everyone the same. If you have got a CRM or an email marketing system that has people that have bought from you in the past, you could say, you recently purchased from me, so I thought you may like this. Or you might say, hey, has a new subscriber. Um, We know um, here's a first time buyer's coupon. We're not funnel lumping. We're putting people masked, uh, depending on what tags they have or what lists they're on or previous history they've done. We're talking to them Um, in our emails um, respectfully. So number three is you need to, you can survey past customers or look at insights. So for example, in the VIP group that we have in on Facebook uh, for our VIPs, you could go in there and say, I'm thinking of running this promotion. Do you think that for a coach right now, they would like to 
uh, they would be interested in doing a speakers development program over this period. Um, so surveying customers is a really good thing. You could use SurveyMonkey for that. And remember, I always encourage you to not do multiple choice, but rather get the customer to actually write what they think would be good. Um, and looking at insights is a really a, a good one as well. Looking at your insights or traction of what has worked pre uh, previously in the past. Number four, realistically. Realistically, do you have stock of it? And can it be delivered in time? I mean, I think those are two of the most important things. Now, you know, that might sound like it's product-based, but it certainly is service-based as well, because you might go, um, so Catherine, for example, might go, I'm going to run a speakers program over Christmas in January, but then Catherine might be looking after her grandchildren for the whole month of December, and then for the whole month of January, she might be going caravanning, and she doesn't actually have capacity to deliver on that program over that time. So you need to you need to go, is it realistic for my customer? And is it realistic for me? And as I said, that comes down to stock and deliverability. Really important for product-based businesses to have on their website the closing off day for deliveries. Incredibly important what the closing off day for deliveries is and if there is a pickup option. If you then suddenly change to a pickup option, have pickups available in Adelaide, go into all the Facebook groups and let them know that there's a pickup. Maybe it's like the Christmas trees on the Gold Coast where they've just got one day. That's a pickup day. So you can order online, but you have to pick it up on this day or else it'll be donated to charity. Um, that's something else you can do. I know uh, Sandy does that with the bicycle sh store as well, where uh, they have pickup day on New Year's Eve. You cannot believe how many people forget to pick up their bikes on New Year's Eve. Unbelievable like 10 to 20 people every year, crazy. Um, and then, yeah, they can't get out on New Year's Eve. It becomes a big problem every year. So yeah, realistic for you and for the um, for your audience. Uh, the last one, number five, is your channels and your audience. And it's in relation to new channels and old channels, uh, and it's new audience and old audience that you need to be paying attention to online. All right, so did you know 46% of millennials use YouTube for Christmas shopping ideas? Um, and the overall score, I think, was around 39% of people. So they go onto YouTube to look for Christmas shopping ideas. So consider if you're looking at channels and audience and you're looking at new channels and new audience, consider YouTube and going, what can I do on YouTube to bring awareness around a possible uh, for, their, for, for my audience to choose me as a shopping option, all right, because they are searching on there. So here are some holiday marketing ideas. A holiday sales tab on your website, and many of you have done this already with your Black Friday sales. You've got a Black Friday sales tab, which is awesome. You can update your branding with seasonal graphics and relevant key messages, and I'm going to show you how to do that in Canva today. I thought it was really cool. I showed you Canva last week. I thought I'd show you again how to do it this week. Uh, number three is holiday-related blogs. So, for example, Tyra might go, um, here are our 10 best ideas for celebrating Christmas Day in a caravan with the family, okay? And she might create that blog and now have that blog on her website or go use it in content, Um you could use a pop-up as an early, early access to deals subscriber, uh, which we saw, which was used as a lead form on Facebook earlier in the, uh, what's it called? The Coca Banner um, early access subscriber lead form that they did on Facebook. You could do the same thing on uh, your website as a pop-up. You could do holiday content posts, again, for example, the 12 days of Christmas, or you could even do a countdown to Christmas every day with a tip. Um, collaborations, uh, Tara spoke about the, the collaboration that um, BWS had done with the Coca Banner place as well. Um, events, so many people forget about in-person events and I've got two clients at the moment who are doing that where although they are focusing on email marketing and social media marketing, both of them are on the Gold Coast actually and both of them I've got stock at home that they need to sell and I said to them, why don't you have a garage sale and have a Chris, a, like a, a garage sale which is come and buy my stuff at my garage sale in time for Christmas. And, you know, I'll give you a gift on a gift with purchase or um, 
a mystery gift. Uh, mystery gift, I'm writing this down. Um, so you could do video and lives, of course. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make that GIF in, how to make a GIF in um, Canva. You could do a live shopping. So for example, if you're in a Facebook group on a Facebook page, you could do a live shopping day and go, right, this is the day that I'm doing a live shopping. Obviously, if you've got a few products, go live and ask people to come in sold when they want to purchase it. Getting money from them is really difficult. So you want to make sure that you've got a way to be able to give them a link to purchase straight away. Um, and also have your T's and C's visible and say, if you comment sold, uh, you are required to pay no change of minds. Uh, gift guides. Gift guides are really good. And I don't know if it's just you or me and a lot of audience can comment in the chat box. I always look at, I seriously Google every year, what is the best Christmas gift for an 18 year old girl? Like seriously, that is what I do every single year. Bearing in mind that a lot of those people will be paying to be in that gift guide. Um, but it will give you a good idea of what is around as well for you to be looking at. Um, you could do a review of your products or a product highlight. Um, so, you know, if you're considering buying this, this is a product highlight, features of this product. Um, I was just thinking now with someone like Tara, she could even just do a behind the scenes or, you know, how these were made or, um, yeah, just a great way to engage your audience. You could do best of the last sellers. You could do clearance offers. You could do loyalty offers. So for the live audience right now, you'll be the first to know that. Um, I don't know if I should tell you or not. Should I tell you? Shouldn't I tell you? Uh, Christmas surprise. I've decided that anybody who uh, has worked with me over the last year, so over the last 12 months, whatever programs I've done in that year, I will actually gift you all those programs. So give you lifetime access to all those back programs for all my VIPP, um, my VIPP clients and my VIP clients, uh, if you've been working with me for a year plus, uh, you will get access to everything. So I'm just going to load you with every single template program that we have you're going to get that as a gift for Christmas. So, you know, that's kind of like, well, it's not even a loyalty offer. That's a loyalty gift. Um, but yeah, so you may consider doing something like that. So don't forget about your, your current one. So for example, I buy my coffee pods. They are biodegradable coffee pods for my LD machine. Um, and I get them every single month. I think it's about $40 and every single month they're on subscription and they arrive. And I got a text message today from the company which is an example of funnel lumping, where they said um, uh, if a thirty percent off for new thirty percent off for new subscribers, and I just went, "What about me? I've been purchasing these coffee pods for like the last year. How come I'm not getting a free pack of coffee pods as a Christmas gift for having purchased from them for the last year? But they're giving thirty percent off to new subscribers." I was like, "Hmm." So um, that's just an example of the loyalty thing. You could do a re-engagement offer as well. So something like I haven't heard from you or it's been a while since you were, you know, engaged or offered or bought from us, but, you know, I'd like to give you some a um, special deal on something or um, we've done this before when somebody's booked a let's chat, but they didn't sign up as a client, we'll go back and do a re-engagement offer to them and say, hey, listen, for whatever reason, you didn't go ahead when you did that let's chat, you know, six months ago, wondering whether or not you're interested in having another chat or whether or not you're interested in taking advantage of our Black Friday uh, sale that we've got on our programs. Um, Hand-posted cards, and I'm going to show you how to make them in Canva. Uh, Hand-posted cards, there's nothing better than that. It's just so difficult to get people's addresses. Uh, really difficult to get them. Um, or you could do an e-posted card. And there are platforms where you can actually buy credits and have these cards virtually emailed to someone. However, you literally can just create a GIF and send it to them uh, as a text, a message, or even in an email. What I don't want you to forget is that um, you may or may not be working or holidaying yourself. And this is really important for you to consider don't forget to block out your calendar. I've already said to my, my VA to block out my calendar for 2023 for all the Gold Coast uh, holidays. Block it out so that people don't go in and book in um, on those days, uh, all the public holidays and special days. Um, and you want to make sure that when you are going away that you have someone available to check on your socials or emails if need be. Um, you don't want to suddenly be trolled or something happen. You, maybe you're out of Wi-Fi and you've got nobody monitoring your so socials or your emails. Um, but you don't want to wind things down. You just want to make sure that you schedule your content in advance 
and you have everything under control. You're managing it well. You're not winding it down. You're just managing it well over the holiday season. So you need to update your audience on your availability. So you can do that in your Google My Business. So especially location-based shops or service-based shops like Tradies, you need to go into Google My Business and say, look, we are operating or we're not operating over that time. There is nothing worse than when somebody hasn't updated it and you're calling them, uh, you know, you're calling a plumber or whatever and the plumber goes, oh, I'm not working. And you're like, well, why didn't you update your, update your hours, you know? So update your hours on your Google My Business account. Create a Facebook pin uh, either in your group or on your page and say these are our holiday hours. You could put it on your Facebook banner. Uh, Facebook banner is a really good one, especially for countdown for shopping. So, you know, you've got five days left to shop until, you know, you're, um, it's not, you're not going to be able to have it delivered or posted out to you. So you might have like a little countdown timer up there on your banner. You just got to go in and change it every day. Um, but that's a great place to put that. You could update your Facebook about section as well. In your Facebook about section, you do have your operating hours in there. It's a bit of a pain. With Facebook, you can only block it out for a week. So for example, when Monday is, uh, I think Christmas, and then you got New Year's Day, you can only do it a week in advance. So whenever we went away camping over that time, we would have to go, go and get Wi-Fi to make sure that we could block it out and then turn it back on again for um, my partner's store because stores are really important that you've got the operating hours on else people don't know to visit you or not. Absolute pain, but Facebook, you can only do it a week in advance. You can't go and map it out for the whole month. So be mindful that you've got to turn it off and, and within the week, you've got to turn it back on again. Um, Instagram, you can put it in your bio. I mean, you can update your Linktree account as well. Um, email out to everybody wishing them a Merry Christmas and advising them of your hours. Um, email autoresponders, hey, we're away at the moment. This is when we'll be back. And updating your phone message. So many people don't even know what their phone message says, or perhaps you went on holiday from last year and your message still says that you're on holiday and you don't know. So update your phone message so it's perfectly clear on how you want to be contacted. Is it by email? Is it booking on the website? When are you going to be back? But letting people know what the next step is. And of course, you can update your website, banners, pop-ups, uh, and operating hours as well. Let's just go back into here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is... All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you to Canva and I'm just going to show you some examples of things that you can do, which is super cool. Um, so we all know like Canva is so incredibly easy. Um, this is one that I did last year. I just use a template, put in my own branding colors. Um, so when we, so if you look on the left-hand side, that's what it was with that blonde haired woman with sunglasses and the sail on the left-hand side, that was the image that I've got now. So when you're looking at the templates, imagine what that could look like with your colors and the seasonal stuff, because I did that from that. Okay. Blonde to brunette, <laughs> pink and blue to this. So, mom, and um, yeah, so if you have a look, I'll just push play for you. Down the left-hand side over here as well, you can go audio and you can put in the the, tie, the um, music. Um, and I chose Christmas music and I'll play for you. Doesn't get easier than that. Does not get easier than that, okay? That can be sent... Uh, in an email, it can be sent as a Facebook post, in your stories, you could go change that now to, you know, Happy New Year. Um, so incredibly easy when you're just working off a template. So I, li I literally found this one five minutes before we started. Um, and all I did was go into uh, videos. I think I went into, well, let, let me just have a look at my search. Oh, I can't. What did I search? I searched Happy New Year, I searched videos, and I found this one over here, and I just started making it five minutes before this presentation. And I thought, I'm going to do this one as a year in review. So if you look on the left-hand side where it says recently used, 
that's the one that they had. It's got still images and videos inside the um, inside the pictures. And I've gone and put my own ones, my own images in there, or some of them. You'll see some of my own images. So I'm just going to play it for you. I also went to audio down the left-hand side and I put celebration music on. Okay, so I haven't finished doing it. I'll write my own words and I'll change my own, but you can see I've already started loading some things in there. I'll just show you. So you can see my still images. You can see my little images in there. So all I did was go to upload. So if I, I'm, I'm actually going to show you. So if I go in and there's a still, there's a little video. So that's a video, right? If I go into that little image, because it's a template already, all I did was delete. Then all I do is go to uploads, upload a video or a GIF or something else that I want to put in there. So I just, I've, I'll just do it as an example. I'll just go and find something. Okay. And if I just drag it, whoa. Why is it not going in there? Hold on. Okay. Okay, that's what you need. There we go. So if I take that now and put that there, it's now put that image in there. All right, so if I go take that image or video, I can go down the left-hand side. I can upload videos into there and I can just put images in there. Now, if they're not videos, like this, this yellow one over here, that's my Black Friday gift that I made. So you can just add your little gifts in there. Um, but if I want to animate these, so say it's a still image, I can just click on it, click on it, and I can just go to animate, and I can just use the left-hand side to just, animate it okay literally this took me two seconds i just found a template and went oh cool i'm just going to change all those pictures and i'm just going to add i'm going to make it longer so i'm going to add a year in review and i might just go into facebook find one picture or one video from every month and i'm just going to make a little video so easy too easy oh i'll show you happy new year and doing cards literally you can go to home I just went to Happy New Year. Video. Templates. There's a whole bunch of templates over here. Um, you can choose one you like. And again, all I would do is go in, update my font, uh, update my font, update my colors. I'd go in, update my, my colors, update my font, stick in my image, use my words, and happy holidays is done or happy new year. Simply that, that easy. So my advice to you would be to go now and get all those holiday ones done. Go, I'm going to do Merry Christmas. I'm going to do Happy New Year. I'm going to do um, Australia Day. I normally do Australia Day. I've got one of me in a floaty. I use it every year with a little uh, with a little um, flag. And I just use that one every single year. So I, I, it looks like I never get older or bigger. <laughs> but I use that one every year. And, um, and just make sure that you've got those ones set, you know. And if you're going away on holiday, make sure that you've got your content mapped out. So what we'll do is we'll leave our watches, our online watching, and we'll go to our live audience.